I don't mean to alarm you, but I was working on a scene to prove 3D Pop. I did prove it, and then angels flew everywhere. I was sensing a lot of depth happening. We finally proved it. Once and for all, it cannot be denied. No matter how bad your glasses, no matter what phone you're watching this on, you're gonna see it today. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Okay, we got a lot to get to. I got a bunch of different scenes. I was just trying to think, how the hell do we prove 3D pop exists? Because when you're out in nature, it's like, oh yeah, I see the pop, but it's hard to distinguish between just background blur and three-dimensional pop. So I was like, okay, we're gonna stop the lens down. I'm gonna put objects closer and further. We're gonna, can we detect how far something is? We, we got a lot to get to here. Okay, first scene here, we have three lens caps all at different distances. Can you guess which lens cap is closest and which is furthest? There's three distances here, one's in the middle. Which is it? And here's the next lens. Did you see the shift? Now, this is just the first initial test. It's really hard to see it. So let's go back here. Here's the first lens. That's pretty cool. Okay, are you detecting that one is flatter, is it easier to spot the difference? If I'm being honest with you, it is hard. And the one lens that I thought would be popular seems flatter in this comparison. So the first lens was the Canon EF 17 to 40, Tony 4, it's a zoom lens from 1921. I did not think that would pop at all. And then we have the EF35 Prime, which is known to pop. They're both at Tony 4, and it's really damn hard to see a difference. Now here's the same scene. At first I was zoomed in just so you couldn't tell anything from the scene. I just wanted the lens caps. Now we're seeing a bit revealed here, and then we switch on over. You see it almost, it's like a barrel distortion or something. You see a shift, but it's not obvious. Here's the zoom lens and switch into the prime. I don't know, man. I thought maybe we'll do it without the light. Now it's the full scene. You can see things are being revealed here and then we switch. Oh, oh, what happened there? Huh? Okay, that was reversed. First lens was the prime, 35 mil 1.4, huh? huh? I, oh, there it is. A little shift happened. So I don't know. Trust me, we haven't got to the smoking gun yet. This is all just leading up. Like, how can I prove this? This isn't working. Once a lens has a bit of pop, it's almost impossible to distinguish between that and a highly Zeiss poppy lens. But if you're flat, like a Sigma or something, which I don't have, but I, I figured out a way to replicate Sigma. It's called using your phone. <laughs> you suck, Sigma. Okay, next scene here, we have a little train. I'm focused on the back of the train in between the lens caps. One is further away, one is closer. It's pretty obvious. Did you see it? Did you see that happen? Let's go back. There it is, first one, and then boom. It lengthened, didn't it? So like, we now see some depth happening. So the first lens was actually the Laowa 35mm 2.8 tilt shift lens, which shouldn't have any pop, and it's noticeably flatter than the EF 35mm 1.4. Both were stopped down 2.8. The weird thing is when we switch to the Canon zoom, it seems to lengthen even farther. So it's like it has more pop somehow. I don't get it. Now I'm throwing everything at it. We got rulers measuring depth of field, lens caps happening over here. Which image do you think has the more pop? If I'm looking at it, oh boy, it's the perspective change that makes things hard. Like the Laowa is on your right and Canon on your left. And that was a big heavy lens, like just trying to line it up. Whereas I realized I should switch to the zoom. And so I'm just changing lenses after. But for this setup, I was like, oh God, this is not working. What if I just used my phone? that's when the angels started coming. Okay, just two more tests. This is the first one. Here we are. This is flat city. We have a persimmon fruit in the middle. We got two lens caps. One is closer, one is further away. And this is on the phone. And if we're looking at it, it is damn hard to tell. 
what the hell is in front or back. Everything looks like it's on the same plane. Now watch for it. Boom. Now this is just the first one. This isn't the smoking gun test that proves everything, but now we're starting to see. Okay, the persimmon fruit has better curves than I thought. Going back to the phone, it just, something's off with it. Everything looks like it's on the same level. And then boom, we have EF 24 mil 1.4 lens that has some pop for sure. But here's the original shot, full, not zoomed in at all, phone, disgusting everything looks like it's on the same thing and the boom we have some sense of depth but it's not this is not proof you want proof what you're about to see is frightening it proves that we can somehow capture three-dimensional images in a flat plane of existence you're watching on a flat device but you're going to be brought in to another realm it, if you have children just let them leave forever. Here we have the scene. Magical two lens caps. Something's off. You can tell something. He did some kind of trickery. What's going on here? Yes, one is closer to you. One is a little further away. Which is which? Can you guess? Which is closer to us? Really let it sink in there. And then let me show you which is closer with a 3D popping lens. Welcome to the universe that is now. You noticed that left one jumped a little bit, did you not? Switching on back to the phone, same height, same exact height, what's going on here? And then boom, we got pop now, all of a sudden it's, oh, that's why, and I was stopped down as hard as you can get, with like Tony 8 or something. It was hard news and everything's in focus, the floor, everything, it's not depth of field that you're witnessing, it's pop. So the lens cap on the left is actually on a bottle like a pretty tall bottle it's noticeably high it's probably like six or seven inches closer and you can't really sense it on a flat lens but when you have a popping lens you can see the difference here's the full scene you can see everything like it almost looks like every single thing is on the same you can't even see the sink dipping down the plates you're guessing they're stacked but Boom, all of a sudden the cap comes closer to you, the floor gets pushed back, like you can now kind of sense, okay, we're on a little tall counter here and the lens cap differences. The weirdest thing is I'm seeing like more difference between the 17 mil zoom lens. It seems to have more pop than my prime and it doesn't make sense on paper and I don't get why that's happening. But what I think we're seeing is it's so damn hard to tell that you have to go through all this stuff just to see the pop. God, what is the point of even buying a lens and dedicating your whole lifestyle to only getting 3D popping lenses? And I don't know, like if I get a Sigma lens that's super flat and then we can test, like maybe a Viltrox will send something out soon in the future and then I'll do this counter test again and then we'll finally see it like okay but it seems like as soon as you go up to mirrorless you can start detecting depth with any lens i just i don't know this lens has pop it's a poppy lens it always has been so let me know what you thought of all that which had pop what didn't let me know if you can think of a test that would prove it once and for all and then i'll do it these were my ideas i'm like thinking here it took me two days hours each day i'm like god i'm not seeing it what's going on here because i don't own flat lenses i thought i did but the lawa even that it had a bit of extra stretch out when you switched to the canon lens didn't it you saw it right come on so 3d pop could be real you have to admit that at least compared to phones well we learned something today a little bit thank you for the bitcoin donations I don't know, man. We learn nothing. Subscribe for my